Hi there, and welcome to the Kingdom Sexuality Podcast. We're Paris and Alana, friends who have a heart for intimacy and long to uncover God's truth and design for sexual freedom within marriage. Welcome here. Okay, so we are back with another episode. Um, it feels kind of strange doing it bi-weekly, to be honest, but I'm, it's, it's good. It's also good. It's yeah, nice. we're getting into like, a new groove. Yeah, it's like a little break in between. You kind of forget yeah. what it's like to record an episode, and then you come back and you're like, "Oh, right, <laughs> this is how we do it." Um, but no, it's good. And this episode today is all about um, turning sex from a chore into a joy, mm-hmm. which is like kind of convicting. Or I, I used uh, yeah, to find it is it a chore, and even still, sometimes yeah. it's kind of like eh, I don't know if I'm quite in the mood to it, but. Um, Yes. Yeah. So I think this can kind of be relevant for everybody, really, depending on what stage you're at. I don't know if it even matters because I feel like at some point we all kind of have these thoughts. Maybe, maybe Mm -hmm. not. Maybe you never have these thoughts and good for you, (laughs) but (laughs) I do. (laughs) Um, But anyways, Paris, I wanted to pick your brain and see what do you think causes it to become a chore for somebody? Okay, so I'm going to speak on a personal level because that's all the experience I've got here. Mm -hmm. Um, When it comes to sex and just feeling an immediate response, it's like, oh, and I have to catch myself. I'm like, okay, the first thing I do is I bring it back to my mindset. Like always, always, always like what, like I need to do a little check-in with myself. Like what, why am I feeling this way? Because I know what the Lord says about sex. I know what the Lord says about marriage. I know how I feel about my marriage and I am absolutely head over heels in love with my marriage and my husband. So why do I feel like this way? You know, every once in a while, you're right, Alana, it is a seasonal thing and you'll just get into it and you're like, eh, I'm not, I'm not feeling it. And they'll, it'll be like, sometimes even weeks where I'm just like, man, I'm just not feeling it. And it's hard. I don't want to downplay um, how hard it is when you are in this season, because it definitely weighs on you. Mm -hmm. Um, Because if you are anything like me, I don't want it to be like that. I don't want, that's not how I feel about it. That's not how I want to feel about it. Um, So Right. So I check in with my mindset and sometimes, honestly, it's just really, you've said this Alana and it stuck with me for a long time. And you said sex begets sex. And I'm like, man, when we get into a season where we're not being consistently intimate, then that's where I often feel like my mindset just slips and I'm like, oh, but this is going on and I've got so much going on where I just don't feel it. I just don't feel it. Um, but it's because we haven't been consistently intimate in a season of busyness. Mm -hmm. And it's definitely true. I find that when we are very consistent in intentionally pursuing one another intimately, it's good. And then when we're not, it's like, Oh, we're on the struggle bus. (laughs) Yeah, And it's hard to get back in the groove when you haven't done it. Like even like if I'm thinking of myself, you know, you have your postpartum season where you're not allowed to be intimate or like you right, you want to give your body that rest and then you go to do it again. You're like, oh, yeah. I got a butt cramp. Like I'm sore the next day. Like, <laughs> yeah, just, yeah. Right. Like your body just kind of forgets. <laughs> what oh, it's yeah. Like. And so yeah. I feel like that's another contributing factor is like your body just gets used to it. And yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's a thing or not. But to, for me, it was after like yeah. so long of not having like being intimate with Jeff. Then to, oh, like, yeah. after my baby was born, it was like, oh, man, how do I even how do I do this? Oh, my goodness. Postpartum yeah. is a whole other bar- ballpark. It's true. Yeah. Like yeah. I remember I remember those those days very clearly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when I was thinking about, you know, this whole episode and um, I was thinking about, you know, sex becoming a chore and I feel like it can happen just for all sorts of reasons. Mm-hmm. Um. But something also that came to mind is that it can also feel like a chore when you're not experiencing a ton of pleasure in it at oh, times. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And I know for myself, you know, the beginning of our marriage, before I was able to have an orgasm, mm-hmm. I, it was often more the case in that, like, that it was more of a chore because yes. it was still really good, but it wasn't like that next level like yes for me good like it was still good yes. it was still great and a lovely way to connect with my husband and it was you know fun and enjoyable but it was just on a different level than when I could achieve an orgasm also yes 
I yes. I was like, I don't know if that has to like a role to play in it, but maybe. So mm-hmm. um, when I was doing the research, like for the episode, I was, I had found this website and it had said, there's a world of a difference between pleasing our partner because it excites us or because we want to be it to be good for him and pleasing our partner so he gets off our back. Mm-hmm. After a while, if we regularly have sex with our partner and don't fully enjoy it, if we have sex and we don't really want to, things can start to get pear-shaped and sex is becoming a chore. Absolutely. So it really like hit me when it was like, you just, you know, want to have sex to get your partner off your back. I was like, whoa, like that was like a heavy sentence to me. Mm. Like, I wonder mm. how often that's Because the case. that is not right. Because that truly, and this is going to hit hard for all of us who have felt this way. Um, that is going to give you a knock because that is not the intention of intimacy, the way God no. intended to be within your marriage. It's, that is not the point of it. Mm-mm. No. Yeah. I was just, huh. It just really hit me. So, and like thinking about it, like sex becoming a chore and it happens like all the time, right? It happens probably more often than we'd realize or think. Um, and here are some reasons that I had found and I was thinking about, and it was like, you know, perhaps you have small children that demand your yeah. constant attention, right? Just sex isn't a priority. Like you mentioned, maybe you're stressed in life or you're starting yeah. a new role at work and you don't have the capacity to just relax into sex. Yeah. Perhaps you're just way too busy and would just rather sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, or perhaps sex just hasn't been enjoyable for you lately. And so you're just really not that excited about it anymore. Right. Mm-hmm. I feel like there's so many different reasons and there's more than that. Right. Maybe you're unwell. Maybe your spouse is unwell. Um, yeah. You know, maybe you're not, maybe you're just like, yeah, sick. You just obviously wouldn't feel like it then. Um, yeah. The reasons go on and on. Yeah. And all of those, I, we don't want to discriminate anyone who's feeling that way because those are legitimate reasons to be totally. feeling just yucky about things. I mean, I know when we're in high demand seasons with farm life, um, that is definitely something that Neil and I have learned to communicate and be like, okay, you know, the next couple of weeks this is going to be pretty high, strong, high stress weeks with just Cause we're, it's, it's seasonal. We've got time limits on things. Right. And we have to be very, very effective in communicating how we're feeling and actually make a plan around intimacy and just talking about how we feel. Otherwise it will go out the door. It will not happen. So with kind of exploring all those things, um, we want to give you something exciting to look forward to in really changing the narrative around changing sex from a chore to a joy if this is the season that you're in and we want to encourage you that it's absolutely possible um and just like anything in life um sex is no exception to it being a skill that you learn as you journey through it with your spouse there is different levels to your sexuality and to your marriage and to your journey all together combined and i think that's really important for us to keep in mind and to get excited about because you know that where you are today, if you are in a spot that is heavy on your heart, this is not where you're going to stay because you have that decision, that power to make the choice that, okay, we're going to work through this and we're going to get on the same page and, you know, maybe you're going to make some goals or whatever it may be. So we want to give you some ideas here to really help you forward within that. So here is number one. Also, if you hear a tiny baby, just smile because I am, I can hear Alana's little baby and that I can't, I'm just so, I'm not distracted. I just love the little noises. So we're not, we're not editing this out, Alana. Okay. <laughs> we're keeping it very real life. I love it. So number one, instead of saying no, say not now. So just hang tight with me here because this is really smart. Julie Slattery words it like that in one of her blog posts, how instead of always saying yes out of obligation, we just talked about that, right? Because that's not the point of our intimacy or saying no and shutting the intimacy down. Explain to your spouse how you're feeling, um, whatever it may be. And I think another thing I'm going to go a little bit further on this is when you're explaining how you're feeling. Um, do so with grace for both you and your spouse, because I know for me personally, sometimes I start talking about how I'm feeling and all of a sudden I'm having a meltdown because I haven't let it all out. And so I have learned, I need to really be like, okay, this is okay. This is how I'm feeling. Um, and just get it out graciously 
with where you're at, because I know the frustration can really follow suit quickly behind that. So make sure you have these conversations often. Um, and then give him time within like the next, I don't know, 24 hours, next two days, three days. We don't want to go a long time. Okay. Um, where you guys have planned to say yes, and you're going to plan intimacy together. Okay. Um, so I think that's a really, really beautiful way to look at it is because if we have a hard no, absolutely feelings of rejection can set in. Um, and it can get pretty heavy, pretty fast within your marriage. And we don't want that to start setting in. So the not now is a really, really great way to get you each looking forward to something. You're preparing yourselves for this. Um, and you're absolutely delving into communication as well, which is really, really important. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good one too. Cause then you can give yourself like, okay, well, you know what, maybe not now, but how about in, you know, how about tomorrow morning? We'll try and, you know, yeah. make it a priority before we get the kids ready for school or something like that. Right. Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I feel like it kind of ties into the next one. So number two is make time for yourself. And mm -hmm. I, I personally get that this one can be kind of frustrating for people to hear sometimes, especially when you're in the middle of <laughs> raising little ones. Um, yeah. And I, I get it, right? It can be really tricky to, especially like you're nursing your baby every hour, two hours, but it's like, well, mm -hmm. how am I supposed to make time for myself when I'm, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> in the middle of baby land? Um, yeah. But taking the time to like have that movement for yourself, whether it's, you know, going for a walk, getting a coffee either by yourself with a friend, right? Spending mm -hmm. time with friends and doing a workout. Um, it's super important and it's really valuable for your sex life, right? Because you cannot give yes, it is. from an empty cup, right? You have That's to right. fill yourself. And this is a really simple way to do that. And then too, you can be like, you know what? Maybe if you are feeling a bit, you know, touched out um, or tired and whatever, you'd be like, hey, to your spouse, like, I just kind of need to like, get out, go for a coffee. But when I come back, I feel like I'll totally be ready to go. You know, like, I don't know, just being intentional about not just using that as an excuse to go get a coffee, obviously. Um, but be like, hey, I just need to go have a bath and then we'll, mm -hmm. we can have sex afterwards. Like, I just need to do something for myself um, just yeah. to have a little bit of space to feel like me. And then I'll totally be ready to go. So I feel like that can really yes. help in that regard. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're also this is another thing I want to take a step further. You can really take advantage of that alone time, whether it's 10 minutes or a little bit more, a little bit less sometimes to get in the mindset of preparing yourself for totally. your time with your spouse, right? Use that time for preparation for yourself as well. Okay. So number three is up the affection. Sex is definitely more than intercourse. Think back to when you're a teenager, you know, and you're cuddling, you're making out all the time, you're holding hands every chance you got, and it just brought fireworks to your relationship. Um, it's important to bring those sparks back into your marriage by being intentional about showing your spouse affection throughout the day, not just right before you want to make love. Um, and I feel like this is very relatable, probably for most of us. I actually just had this conversation with my husband. And, and it's important. It's important to communicate those things. You know, Neil was expressing something that he particularly misses doing that we haven't been super conscious of. And I was like, man, I'm so glad you said that because that's not something I, being me, would naturally think of. Um, but it's something that he really loves. And it's like, these are important conversations to have for sure. You know, you're yeah. spicing up the intimacy all around. Yeah. And to like... Um... Yeah, I like how you worded it as like just conversations you need to have because I think yeah, I think every now and then you're like, oh, wait, no, I really do miss like just holding your hand when we're out and about. Like it's a really great way to like connect us. It's like even when you're like you've got all the kids, you, you know, whatever, but at the same time to just be really intentional about keeping okay, I also want to hold your hand and I want to like kiss you when you come mm -hmm. home from work or mm -hmm. um, ah, was I reading something or I was listening to a podcast and the couple – Oh yeah, it was a podcast. Every time after they would say grace after a meal, like for a meal, they would mm -hmm. say their prayer and then they'd kiss. Oh, Neil and, and I do that. <laughs> really? We've always done that. Yes. That's so hey, funny. Someone else does that too. I can't remember. Hilarious. I think it was on Java with Julie. But yeah. So then, and now they're, they're kids. So they had kids and now yes. the kids are married and now the married kids do that too. Do the same thing. Yeah. So I, I was that. like, what a nice way to just, you know, it's 
you just you can do it how many times you eat a day and say grace, right? Like yeah. whenever you're home. Um, yeah. But what a great way to just be intentional about that. And it is. I don't know. Yes. I thought it was cute. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Neil came up with that one. I can't take credit for that. He came up with that years ago and I love it. Cute. All right. Number four is switching your mindset, which you kind of mentioned earlier, Paris, too. But mm-hmm. um, oh, sorry, his little burps. I love baby it. Burps. <laughs> yeah. You'll hear me patting his back. Sorry, sorry about that. Um, so instead of thinking, you know, like, what? Like, you want to have sex again? <laughs> to yeah. Switching your thinking to, you know, oh, my goodness, what a blessing that my spouse desires me. Right? Like, how mm-hmm. often you're like, oh, my goodness, mm-hmm. you yes. want me. Like, how cool is that? And how cool that we get yeah. to actually fulfill this need for each other. Like, literally no one mm-hmm. else mm-hmm. can do, right? As your That's right. husband or as your wife. Like, that is a gift you have for each other, right? So, yeah, I think sure switching your mindset to that. And um, not only thinking that, but just... I don't know, switching your mindset to, you know, okay, well, maybe if we do have sex, even though I'm maybe not quite in the mood, I will get in the mood as we get going, right? Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, thinking about it from your other, like your spouse's perspective too and be like, okay, how would I feel if I was the one to initiate this? And, you know, well, maybe there's valid reasons, obviously, to, to not want to have sex. Um, but if there's like, if you still are like, well, maybe I could do it, right? Like thinking about it as if you shut your husband down every time, right? Mm-hmm. Like I feel like switching your mindset to thinking about how they feel also is is Important. a healthy thing to do every now and then, right? Yeah. Well, get inside their own heads, like really understand where they're coming from, how they're feeling. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. And then lastly, we have make it fun. This is something that Neil and I were talking about just a couple of days ago. And he's like, what – just really means a world to you when it comes to you and I. And I'm like, I love it when we can just have fun together. I love just having fun together. That's a big deal for me. Um, So I love that Alana added this point in here. So add spice to your sex life, your typical sex life by making things fun. Cause oftentimes we'll fall in a rut. No, like with the same things we do every single time, right. Yeah. <laughs> it's important to switch things up because you may be surprised how exciting it is to really implement the whole theme of just having fun when you're together and you're being intimate. So you can do creative things. Like Elena wrote some really good things here. She said, bring whipped cream into the bedroom, like change up your typical sex positions. Try making love somewhere different. Um, We also have a spice it up episode that has some great ideas. You can plug into that, you know, put some music on, like just change up the atmosphere. It's really simple things. Sometimes you don't need to go all out and overwhelm this for yourself. Just try little things and implement it for the fun of it. Sex doesn't have to be a choreographed experience. That's the same every time because we definitely can fall into that. Um, It's good to switch things up and add joy and laughter into it, which how often do people talk about that? You know, oftentimes I think when we think sex, we immediately have the mindset that it just needs to be super erotic and steamy, right? And it's like, well, where is the joy and the laughter and the reality of it too, right? Yeah, (laughs) no kidding. Oh yeah, half the time it's like, I don't know, you're just laughing because it's like, okay, you know, my butt's cramping again. Like I just (laughs) can't do it. Can't do it. (laughs) Like, I don't know what it is, but yeah, no, you got to laugh because (laughs) sometimes you would just cry if not. So, (laughs) oh yeah, I've been all, I know what that's like too. It's true. You need to keep it light oftentimes because like I said earlier, you need to really get it into your head that sex is not something that's just going to magically be perfect. You know, we have, we often come into marriage with that mindset and then we're super bummed (laughs) and it can get really heavy, really fast. And we don't want that. That's not reality. Um, This is a learning experience for us with our spouse to go through. And it's important to keep that on the forefront of your minds because that just fills the entire, the entirety of the experience with grace and with forgiveness and with fun, you know, it's not filled with resentment or hurt because you already realize, Hey, like, this is fine. We're just figuring this out as we go. Right. Yeah, exactly. And two, like, 
obviously it's kind of I feel like it goes without saying because we mention it like so often but and like pray about it for yourself right um yes that God would help you shift your mindset to see it as a gift um instead of a chore or something to check off of the list right and talk to your spouse about it too just tell them hey like I seem to be in this bit of a rut in my mind and I can't really you know get into that joy zone so like how do you think Mm -hmm. we could get there and you know, make a plan to yeah. figure out how to up the pleasure for you if that's something that's maybe not happening or, you know, add some fun, mm-hmm. like we mentioned already, or um, organize time to, to, for you to get some, you know, alone time, right? Um, yeah. I feel like all the things, I really appreciate, like, I like that all the things we've said are pretty practical and doable. Yes. So, yes. So, yeah, we're just praying that as you journey through this and take these steps, um, that your sex life will just be so much better and so much more enjoyable for the two of you so that is our that's our prayer for you guys as you try these things and make sex more of a Mm -hmm. a joy a joy instead of a chore hey friends thank you so much for hanging out with us as we dive deeper into meaningful godly intimacy tackle the hard questions and embrace truth while we're at it we're also on instagram at kingdom sexuality you'll find our instagram handle below in the show notes where you'll also see any other resource links we may have mentioned in today's episode. As always, our hearts are to cultivate deep community and freedom with you guys. And we cannot wait to continue this journey alongside you. We'll see you in the next episode.